Welcome to the Maria Heller Show, on the net since 2000 and still going strong. If you feel like you're not getting the real news, if you feel like you're not connected spiritually, you have found your home. Maria covers a wide range of topics as only a snarky New Yorker can. Straight up, no chaser. No censorship, no corporate sponsors, thus true freedom of speech. Your subscription gives you unlimited access as a member of the smartest audience on earth. Relax and enjoy the education. Now here's Maria. Good morning world. Maria here alive and kicking. Welcome to the show. I have a special guest today and he's been a friend and a a contributor to the show since I started 20 years ago. He is probably the best investigative journalist out there. He is the reason America, 20 years later, is understanding how our votes are stolen, understanding disenfranchisement of our voters, and stolen elections. Nobody does it better, and I've interviewed everybody on this topic, from Gore Vidal to Vince Bugliosi to Bob Fitrakis, but there's only one Greg Palace. And today we're going to talk about his newest book, How Trump Stole 2020, and it's got great cartoons in it by Ted Rawl. I believe Ted did this in another one of your books, uh, Greg, and uh, I think it was Armed Madhouse, which I mentioned on my show yesterday. So good morning, Greg. Good morning, yes. Uh, Well, actually, Ted, uh, well, he did uh, this book, How Trump Stole 2020, a 48-page comic book in the middle of it, and I know I'm going to get all the... uh, National Petroleum Radio type say, oh, you're not serious because you have a comic book. No, it's real serious. I'm so serious. Now, I'll use comic books, sky writing, um, old disco tunes, whatever it takes to get people to wake up because, and here's the point, how Trump stole 2020 is not a prediction. I have no idea how people are going to vote in November. It doesn't matter. It's a warning. Right. It's a fact. They've already stolen the election, but we can steal it back, we can bust the burglary, we can reverse the steal, but it's already stolen. We have to unsteal it. That's the key thing. And that's why I'm glad to be speaking with you again. And of course, as you say, we've been together uh, in for two decades since I was a reporter in London for The Guardian and BBC Television, and I broke the story And on your program in the United States because... Well, I, it was front page news, top of the TV news in Britain. It was only on your show that the Americans got the word that George Bush, George W., had stolen the election mm-hmm. in Florida in 2000 uh, by, by Catherine Harris, the Secretary of State. For those of you of a certain age, you should remember. She was Secretary of State. Jeb Bush was governor of Florida. And they managed to remove 58,000, 58,000. Um, African Americans from the voter rolls saying that they were felons who couldn't vote in Florida at the time, which meant that they were, but their only crime was voting while black. Not one was an illegal voter, but that's what made George Bush president. Now, why even bother going back to that story besides a walk down nostalgia lane with Maria, Her- uh, Maria Heller about what we first broadcast to the U.S. 20 years ago? They took that idea and basically expanded it, made it more vicious, more sophisticated, and took it on the road to, you know, 30 other GOP-controlled states because they succeeded. George Bush won. George W. became president over because of 537 votes in the state of Florida by excluding tens of thousands of black men from the voter rolls. Exactly. And, then and if- now, they're, now they're doing the same thing except on a scale which is so large, it's almost, you basically, American politicians and American media don't want to look at what's staring them in the face. Absolutely. But, you know, I see so many other stories now in news pieces on how they steal the election. Uh, and I think to myself, you know, 20 years ago, we thought we were slamming our heads against the wall, trying to get people to understand this. And I honestly believe, Greg, that if it wasn't for your work, people would not be making the posts, writing the stories uh, that they are now. Uh, so you were really, the, uh, to me, the first person to really uh, put it out there. And I believe that was on the best democracy okay. money can buy. 
That's right. I wrote a book, The Best Democracy Money Can Buy, based on my BBC and Guardian reports on 2000 and then all the other related issues. And yeah, so apparently the Republicans read uh, my books very closely all right. <laughs> and said, oh, here's how we, oh, yeah, that's, you're right, that's how we win. So, <laughs> and they just, uh, though I suspect that they didn't need Greg Palast to say, yeah, you stole the election, so let's keep doing it. <laughs> but that's here's the, the problem. Thing. They got right. away with it. They got away with it. And, um, you know, maybe this year, Maybe, in a way, in the most horrible manner, George Floyd might save us, because for the first time in America, we're having this focus, finally, exactly. on race. And because when we talk about stealing elections, as I said in Florida, it comes down to removing black voters. And as I say in How Trump Stole 2020, look, there's just, you look at the demographics of today. There simply aren't enough white guys to elect or reelect Donald Trump. So they have to get rid of the non-white guys and women and young people. And when I say non-white, they've really expanded the attack operations, not only to Hispanics, but now to the Asian American community, where they've really gone after the Asian American community. So you'll see this in How Trump Stole 2020. Read the comics, but read the rest. I try to make it entertaining. That doesn't mean it ain't serious. It's really deadly serious, but it, I'm trying to make it so that you will enjoy reading it right. and get through it so you get all the info right. and pass it on. Well, I get your sense of humor through it because if you and I didn't have a sense of humor, we might have had a stroke, you know, 25, 20 years ago. Well, but- yeah, I mean, you can't cry through 300 pages. It's a quick read, but it it's... Is. Um, I want that. That's why I want to make it a quick, easy read. But also, I don't know if it's easy, but it's entertaining. But the important thing is that is that you get find out how they did steal the election, how you can steal it back. And now, you know, they purge the voter rolls in Florida. The purge. When we say purge, it's like an enema to the voter rolls. You know, they they just get rid of what they don't want there. And um, you know, like a TV show, The Purge, where once a year you can kill anyone you want. Mm-hmm. Well. Once a year, GOP secretaries of state voting officials can remove any voters they don't like. Uh, so that's the issue here. And, and here's the number from the U.S. Elections Assistance Commission. It's not from Greg Palast. I only cite it. I don't make it up. 16.7 million people have been purged, removed, erased from the voter rolls, in the last two years of records. And that's 16.7 re- million voters. Now, that's about one in 12 mm-hmm. um, of registered voters, uh, one in nine, uh, one in 11. That means you, if you're listening. If I want anyone listening, please, the first thing I tell you, because again, how Trump stole 2020 is all about, it's your final warning. It's, you know, we can reverse it. But the first thing is, don't assume you're registered. I didn't. I went on. I'm here in in, in uh, uh, cool L.A. and I looked up my registration. And said no, uh, Greg Palast, no such voter. So I re-registered online. That's what you're going to do. Everyone listening, you're out of your mind unless you check your registration, because when you open my book uh, and you see that. Um, how Trump Stole 2020. Uh, I'm at the Atlanta voting station in 2018, a couple years ago. And I have a list of the people who have been purged. I try to warn as many people as possible. We actually got 100,000 people going to gregpalace.com to check if they've been purged. We're going to put up, by the way, all these purge lists from state to state so you can look yourself up. But um, I was there when Christine Jordan was thrown out of the, vo- the polling station. And you'll, I got her on camera. You'll see her photo and her niece. Her niece was in hysterics. Now, Christine Jordan has been voting at the same schoolhouse in Atlanta for 50 years. 50 years. And since 50 years, since the year, since 68, since the year her cousin Martin Luther King was murdered, I went to her house and and I saw pictures of her having dinner with with. Uh, King. I said, oh, so you knew Martin Luther King? He says, that's my cousin. He came, 
he had Sunday dinner with us every Sunday after the after church. And if they can remove Martin Luther King's cousin after 50 years on the voter rolls, mm -hmm. they're going to remove you, man. Right. Listen up. Check your registration. That's how they do it. They stole it. They removed 16 million people. It's over with unless we reverse it and re-register people. And I'm also working with Stacey Abrams' organization and many, many other voting rights groups who are using our investigative material to challenge this stuff. But basically, you've got to save your own vote and people you know. Right. Well, you know, I was thinking that with the Orange Menace in office slamming mail-in voting and that, you know, people from other countries are going to be sending in votes and all this crap. And I said to myself, but they take your mail-in vote and they match it against the voter registration. If you're not registered, that couldn't happen where those votes would be counted. Am I wrong? Yes. Oh, the idea that, first of all, last in 2016, in 2016, we had uh, about 20 million mail-in ballots. And how many were from Bolivia? None. Right. <laughs> the answer, how many from the Ukraine? None. I mean, the answer is, first of all, if you look, those things are all marked uh, and numbered and everything else. There's no, by the way, it's not a secret ballot. Right. Secret ballots are gone. Mail-in ballots are not secret ballots. Okay, so, but that's all right. You're going to have to live with this. They're not secret ballots. So they know who you are, and they have every reason to, to not count your ballot. So if, if they'll come up with it. But we don't have fraud. Uh, as I say in the book, uh, the number one f vote fraud experts, by fraud committed by voters, is um, uh, Lorraine Manitti at Rutgers, who has said that mail-in and in-precinct impersonation, which is a fraud, which... In other words, if someone takes, steals your ballot or fakes your ballot and puts your name, their, your name on, the, you know, basically impersonated you by signing your name or saying they're you. They, she was able to locate 12 cases, not even 12 convictions, but 12 instances where she believed that there was a chance of impersonation out in over six years out of like 4 billion ballots cast. I mean, it's, and so I actually did a calculation. You're 500% more likely to be hit by lightning than impersonate another voter. Right. Excellent. So it's so, it's so it doesn't happen. But here's what I'm warning, Maria. There's a whole chapter called Mail-In Madness. And I want to warn people. I don't agree with Trump that you shouldn't mail in your vote and mail-in votes lead to fraud. It's just the opposite. They steal your legitimate vote. According to MIT, and this is the most frightening figure I've seen anywhere as we head into a mail-in election, 22%, one in five mail-in ballots are never counted. Let me repeat that. One in five mail-in ballots are never counted according to MIT, Caltech study, They've been, they have a voting technology project. They are the, the experts on this. One in five ballots are not counted. And not just, and if it were random, it probably wouldn't matter. But overwhelmingly, it's, it's voters of color and young people mm -hmm. who don't get their ballots counted. Now, the number one way that they steal your mail in vote, and people do not understand this, it's not Oregon. America is not Oregon. Everyone keeps saying, oh, Oregon's had a great experience. America is not Oregon. No, you know, people that can name the cow that they're eating from farm to table foods wear Birkenstocks. That is, it is the whitest state in America. Portland, even though it's under siege, what's surprising about that, it's the whitest city in America, 6% white. So you can't count white voting as what happens in America. We know white voters don't have problems. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about white voters. I'm talking about Americans. Right. And half of Americans are not white voters. All right. Now, um, and they are the have, and it is the non-white Americans who don't get their ballots counted. And the number one reason they don't get their ballots counted, Maria, is that they don't get them in the first place. Hmm. Hello. Uh, 
you cannot mail in your ballot if it's not mailed to you. Right. Now, in California, Oregon, Washington, and Colorado, those four states, now Utah and I guess Hawaii, so you're going to have six states where they mail you your ballot automatically. Every other state, you have to request it. And in the states where you have to request your ballot, you don't get it. Half the time, literally 50% of people who request mail-in ballots do not get them or do not get them in time to vote. Now, is it because people don't know what they're doing? I'm sorry. I was just on the phone with the, with the head of the ACLU in Georgia. She put in her request for a mail-in ballot for herself and her husband 45 days, a month and a half before the, the Georgia primary. Her husband got his ballot on June 10. The primary was June 9. Wow. Now, one hmm. thing she has to admit, that she and her husband are guilty of trying to vote while black, which is, you know, in Georgia, a virtual crime. So they were guilty of voting while, or tr attempting to vote while black. So, but, on the other hand, Andrea Young, you know, Andy Young's daughter, who's at the ACLU, um, it, when the ACLU chief can't get a vote, mail-in vote. Hmm. What's your chance? Right. Now, That's you know, and so here's the problem. People don't get the ballots, so they can't mail them in. That's why we had those massive lines in Georgia and in Kentucky and in Milwaukee. My people were out there, the Greg Palace investigative team, which, by the way, 15 people. We're not a small operation. We ask people, why are you in line? Are you crazy? Now, understand, when you look at those lines, it's almost entirely African-Americans right. and Hispanics. Okay, is it because Hispanics and African-Americans like to stand four hours in the humid Georgia rain and, stand and, and take a chance of getting a virus that'll kill them? Mm -hmm. No, they didn't get their ballots. So I want everyone to be make sure. This doesn't mean that you don't mail in your ballot. It means that you take responsibility and take charge and, and assume that they're trying to shaft you out of your ballot. All right, you just got to so follow up. So what you up. do is, number one, make sure you're registered. I don't know, what is it? There's all these registration drives. So this year there aren't, by the way. That's a real big, big, big problem. Registration has collapsed in America, new registration. DMVs are closed. And and um, voter registration drives are dead, no. not happening. Right. Well, the only place uh, so, I've seen that happen. So now, so what happens is there's a lot of people who get purged. A lot of those 16 million people who are purged, mm -hmm. normally millions of them will re-register, right? We'll re-register or find out that they've been purged. We'll, we'll re-register. This time we're having a big problem with that. So make sure, number one, you're registered because you ain't getting no ballot if you aren't registered. Second, make sure that you contact, that you put in your request for the ballot early. It has two purposes, not just to get your ballot on time, but millions, millions, about 20 million Americans would be my rough estimate, are on what are called inactive lists. You're an inactive voter. That is, according to the state, you missed an election. Right. So you're inactive. Now, Republicans... Um, voting officials like in Ohio and in Georgia and other swing states, and Georgia is a swing state, uh, the, uh, the GOP in those states are saying they're not even going to mail out the postcards to people on the inactive list to say, do you want a mail-in ballot? They're literally not going to, they're creating new second class of voters that we've never had in America before, the so-called inactive voter. And understand, by the way, that's a violation of federal law. Under the National Voter Registration Act, um, you cannot lose your vote for not voting. So they're saying, well, we're not taking away their vote. We're simply not sending them the postcard. So if you don't get a postcard or you don't find it or you missed it, and most people will miss it, go to your county board of elections and ask for an absentee ballot. That will also take you off the inactive list because you've just done something active. You contacted your voting board. They count that as if you'd voted. I know it's just, this is all these crazy ass rules that we have in America. Right. And as you've mentioned, and thank you before we got on air, you uh, congratulated me on my wedding. 
to my uh, chief investigatrix, Lenny was, Bad Penny. I was wondering how long that wedding would take for, to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Many years, uh, but uh, in and we were uh, married in Switzerland. She's a Swiss citizen. And in Switzerland, you don't register to vote. They don't play games. Everyone votes. In fact, you have to. It's the, it's the law. You get fined if you don't vote. Right. Um, and everyone votes. They don't ask for your ID. They don't ask. They don't make you register. They is, And by the way, they have a much bigger foreign population than in the United States. Much bigger foreign-born population. About Yeah. So at least 10% of their population is foreign-born. And But they don't assume... Everyone's sneaking in to vote in their elections. This is an American trick. Um, in Switzerland, by the way, where they where my books are quite popular in my films um, around the world, um, they're horrified. People are horrified in Switzerland and France and England looking at the American voting system and saying, what is this where you don't let black people vote? It's apartheid. It's like South Africa. Right. Wow. And that's what, you know, people are, you know, so again... We take for granted, oh, yeah, they're removing voters. And, no, 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 that's, that's not normal. And we have this crazy system that they don't have in, in other countries, except for uh, Russia, China, Iran, um, which is that party official. We have partisan party officials like Catherine Harris, Ken Blackwell in Ohio in 2004, Brian Kemp, Secretary of State of Georgia, while he's running for election, Chris Kobach of Kansas, Mr. KKK, these are violently partisan voting officials, Maria. I know. Who are, no other nation says, oh, well, let's let the candidates, literally, in the case of, of Kobach and, um, and Kemp, they were both running for governor while they were secretary of state in charge of the vote, in charge of, and the secretary of state gets to determine who's on the voter rolls, where you vote, the rules for voting, and most important, people don't realize this, they determine whether your vote gets counted. And in other nations, the idea that you don't count a vote is stunning. But in America, if you look in how Trump stole 2020, and I want everyone to get it today, for good reason, I'll tell you why. How 5.8 million ballots have been are cast and not counted. That's the dirty little secret of American elections. Not only do we stop people from voting, but we don't count all the ballots. And it's a lot of ballots we don't count. You know, every election in the world has some ballots that are uncountable. And I can tell you as a BBC reporter that in England, for example, in the last election, when we report a vote from a precinct, we say 300 votes for Labor, 372 for the Tories, and 11 ballots uncounted because of, and we say why, because of uh, uh, destroyed by the voter in protest or unreadable or something like that, you know, just impossible. Right. And those ballots, by the way, are laid out on a table in a, like a school gym, so you can see that it's unreadable. But we actually announced the uncounted ballots. In America, we never announced the uncounted ballots. You know why? Because it's millions. It's not 15. It's not 20. It's not 700. It's not 7,000. It is 5.8 million ballots uncounted. We call it spoilage, undervote, overvote, whatever. And again, Maria, it wouldn't matter if it were random. Right. I used to teach statistics. Greg Powell did a lot of weird things to make money. <laughs> Huh. Um, but Didn't we all? Uh, we used to teach statistics. Uh, um, maybe not a legitimate way to earn a living, but okay. But I can tell you this. If it's random, it doesn't matter. Right. It wouldn't change the election. Mm -hmm. It ain't random. According to the U.S. Civil Rights Commission, if you are black, the chance your vote will be disqualified on some technical weird ground is 900% higher than if you're white. Wow. You know, we talk about things like hanging chads and make fun of them back from 2000. All right. What a hanging chad is, is someone tried to vote. Someone punched a punch card, but they didn't notice that the little teeny piece of cardboard from the where they punched out the hole is still sticking by a corner to the back of the ballot. Now, someone clearly tried to vote because there's a hole there and they punched it through. But they're saying if the little chad at the back is still hanging there, 
Your vote doesn't count. I'm sorry. And by the way, you know how the GOP got around that. So Democratic votes with hung chads were not counted. So how did GOP votes get counted? Are you ready for this? They took mentally disabled people with pieces of plastic, with like plastic knives and forks Mm -hmm. to scrape off the chads off the back of the ballots in in the white suburban areas. Of course. Frankly, that's re- that is actually legitimate because someone tried to vote and it's just that the machine can't read something with a piece of paper stuck to it, right? But, and by the way, the reason that they were using, uh, I was talking to uh, the lawyer you mentioned before, Bob Fetrake, is brilliant. He said they use mentally disabled people so that if you file a suit against the procedure, you can't call them as witnesses. <laughs> Huh. I mean, they're so, it's devious, it's sick, but this is what they do. All right. So, but again, we don't have to give up. I say Trump stole 2020, we can steal it back. So I've talked about your be- missing your ballot not getting to you. I've talked about being purged on the voter rolls. I've talked about your vote not getting counted. You can do all kinds of things to protect yourself from this thievery, protect your friends. And I would, you know, I can give you all kinds of policy advice, like, oh, we ought to change the rules so everyone, like, like in Oregon, gets a ballot whether you ask for it or not. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's all those things. Right. But well, I'm going to tell you, don't hold your breath because the, the swing states where the battles are um, are not in Democratic control. So it's sometimes split. Michigan, Wisconsin, mm-hmm. North Carolina, you have you now have Democratic governors. You say, well, it's, it's all cool now. No, it ain't because the legislatures are violently Republican due to gerrymandering. So all these states, by the way, are majority Democrats, but somehow they end up with, not somehow, through gerrymandering, they end up with Republican legislatures, which, and they're the ones that set the rules. Right, and block the And so you got to, so yeah, so I go into Wisconsin, I go into Georgia, I go into all these places. And this is what's very, very dangerous coming up. So you have to take care of your own vote and warn other people. One, by getting the book, How Trump Stole 2020, and at the back of the book, read the book, read the comic book, but most important, the most important two pages are at the back. Absolutely, and that's what I like, that you included solutions and and actions people can take. You know, here in Arizona, I just voted last week. I've been voting by mail for years, by the way, Mm -hmm. Uh, and we we had our local election here. And when they, what they do, and I, I have to say it's done very well, uh, before the election, like a month before, they send you out a book with everybody's propositions. Uh, so you can review that. I'm sure most people throw it away. I read it from cover to cover. Uh, of course you do. Of course I do. And then they send you the, uh, the ballot and with a full piece of paper explaining exactly how to fill it out properly. Is it in English? Yes, it's in English and in Spanish. One oh, side's in go. Spanish. Yeah. One's, well, you know, Arizona's got a lot of Latinos. Uh, well, that's why they don't do a lot in Spanish. So, yeah, <laughs> so, so, I mean, everything uh, they... Where you are. You are in what, what town, if you don't mind? You're in Phoenix, I'm in, right? I'm, no, I'm north of Phoenix in a town uh, called Payson. Okay. Uh, but it was the same in Phoenix, except the booklets they sent were thicker because they had more people running. You know, I live in a town right. of about 15,000 people. Uh, the, they right. have the uh, early voting station has been open for two months. Uh, there's no lines there. Uh, it's right across from the post office. Uh, so they do it well here. Uh, and I, I have to, you know, say in your that. Town, Arizona does not do it very well. Well, this, this, well, this little dipshit town I live in, don't forget, people that live in mountain towns like this are usually running away from something or protesting something else. Uh, so everybody really does pay attention. I mean, I'm not going to say that for the whole state, okay, because there's a lot of racism in Arizona. Uh, but I- I'm, I've been impressed by the way they run their elections here. And even if, you know, when I used to go to a polling station, you were in and out in five minutes. Right. And that's what you don't have in, in, uh, in uh, America's Bantu stands, the, our... our um our black ghettos in America and barrios. Right. So well, for they example, don't... you waited five minutes. Right. And in Dayton, Ohio, uh, you'll see I was standing with the souls to the polls, and the wait was five hours. 
five hours for um, because in early voting in Ohio, 70% of African Americans vote early. And the reason is because as in, after 2004, they used by having black people stand in long lines, mm -hmm. and they did it. In, um, that's how they were able to steal 16. That was a big part of it. In Ohio, um, you had these massive long lines. So, for example, they, uh, the Republican Secretary of State, you'll see in my book, said, oh, let's make early voting fair. So to make it fair for everyone, we will have one voting station for every county. Now, they have a county in Ohio that has 6, 000, that has a population of 6,000, and I think that, that includes the cows. All right. They have one voting station for 6,000 residents. Cleveland, with a million residents, had one voting station. That's ridiculous. Dayton, Ohio, with half a million, one voting station. Why? Hmm, what color is Cleveland? What color is Dayton? Uh, so I waited five hours in line with the souls to the polls in Dayton. Hmm. Then I went to the white suburbs of Toledo to see how long those lines were. And for those of you who've seen my film, The Best Democracy Money Can Buy, and also there's photos from this in the book, you'll see the five-hour line of black people, and next to it is the picture of me at the white voting station, and there is zero line. Well, there's a little line. There's a line of poll workers waiting for voters right. with coffee and cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell you that the Dayton voters, remember, this is December, this ain't Arizona, this is December, excuse me, November, in Ohio, it is freezing cold, and people are waiting five hours in the municipal parking lot to vote. Right. Freezing. Crazy. For hours. Okay? This is American apartheid elections. So we can steal it back. So what we have to do now is make sure that you steal back your vote. And the way to do that, so how Trump stole 2020, the last two of the last pages is something called... Greg and Ted's new improved ballot condom for safe voting. Uh, Ted is, of course, the, the, my illustrator cartoonist. Uh, no, you don't wrap the, the ballot condom around your ballot. What you do is you follow seven steps to make sure your ballot gets counted. And again, I'm going back to what I said earlier, and if you're tired of me saying it, too bad. Check your registration while you're listening. Check it and then check it again in September to see if you have been purged. If you, by the way, if your name's on the voter rolls, take a screenshot, because it might not be there later. Hmm. So you have it when you go in to vote. Take in every type of ID you can imagine. Um, and if you're African American, um, a lot of states, most states do not require you. Well, no, about half the states require ID today. But if you're African American, you will be asked for your ID. 67% of African males are asked for their ID, including in states that prohibit someone from asking for your ID. But if you're black, you will be asked for your ID. This, that's just the truth. Right. Well, that's okay. This, that's... So you can do two things. My friend, uh, the hip hop artist and opera librettist, uh, Jerry Quickly, when he was asked for his ID here in California, uh, he's 6'4 and quite large, so he says, do I have to choke you to death to get you to not ask that question? So they backed off. Huh. But um, for most of you in this planet, just bring uh, bring ID and bring a lawyer. All right, don't start choking anybody. And, and by the way, one thing, and also, there's a lot of other tricks we use in America to enforce apartheid voting. Well, hold that thought because we need yeah. to go to break, Greg. So stay okay. with us, Greg, and I will be right back. Hi, this is Maria. I don't often get to talk directly to the listeners here on the Gary Knoll Network, but I felt like doing that today. I know a lot of you really enjoy my show, but you might not know that I do four shows a week over at my website, maria.net. So if you're loving the show you get to hear on Sunday, come on over to my site and subscribe because I've got hundreds of hours of great shows on pretty much every topic in the universe. Uh, and that, again, is maria.net, M-E-R-I-A.net. And now we can get back to this excellent show. Thanks. Okay, oh, welcome, be, back be to, welcome back to one of the most important shows for 2020 you're ever going to hear is today's show with Greg Pallas on his latest book, How Trump Stole 2020, 
and basically what we can do about it to make sure what happened in 2016, 2008, 2000, all the way back to 2000, probably further than that, doesn't happen anymore. And Greg, I think that you're right. Uh, you seeing, uh, I think George Floyd ended up giving his life for many good causes. Uh, and it's sad that it had to take, you know, the last straw to break the camel's back for people to come out in the streets and realize uh, the Black Lives Matter movement. And when you said earlier that you don't see registration drives, the only place I've seen the registration drives are at the Black Lives Matter protests. Now, oh, by the way, I want to warn people who have signed up at rallies and protests. They're not going to put your name on the voter rolls. You may have signed a piece of paper, but don't expect hostile state officials and county officials to actually add your name to the voter rolls. This is another nasty little secret of our elections. About 40% of the people who fill out mail, physical, those paper yellow forms for registration, about 40% will never see their names on the voter rolls. Or their names will be added right after the election. Um... And Arizona is a terrible one, by the way, on that. Um, they simply don't add your name, and they're not required to. And here's the other problem. Whose name doesn't get added? I had spoke to the California, the last California Secretary of State who said, uh, oh, yeah, they're not, they weren't adding names that they consider unusual. Well, I said, what's unusual? Oh, like anything with a, hyph with a hyphen or an accent. In other words, Garcia Marquez four names, and like Mohammed, which is, by the way, Mohammed's the most common name on this planet, but it is unusual for, it's not, a, so when she says an unusual name, she means it's unusual for a Republican. Mm -hmm. So they literally don't add your names. Um, Brian Kemp, when he was Secretary of State of Georgia, was handed 40,000 registration forms by uh, Stacey Abrams, and uh, from her group, Registered Young Voters of Color. Mm-hmm. On the election of 2014, they submitted those six months before the election. None of them were added. By 2018, four years later, by the time she ran for governor, they still hadn't been added. Hmm. And the court said, well, we can't force the, the state or the counties to uh, hire people to, uh, to add names to the rolls. So I tell everyone, while we, we're not crazy about voting online, I want to tell you that Registering online is the only safe way to do it. Only safe way is to register online. If you register on a piece of paper, check your registration and check it again. This is the games that they played. And by the way, here's a, here's a story from uh, about John Lewis. Since it, let's honor John Lewis, he's in the book. Right. I had to take out his picture because the picture was way too grainy and it didn't print. But um, John Lewis um, is in the book. Where he, uh, where he is dancing uh, Gangnam Style. Uh, if you're wondering why, because he was promoting voting Gangnam Style among Korean Americans in his district. And because they were under attack, you had a group called 10,000... This story, if this doesn't outrage you, then I don't know what. This is, again, from How Trump Stole 2020, the section called The Rise of Kim Crow, which is... You had a group called 10,000 Koreans Vote. For 10,000 Koreans Vote, obviously 10,000 Korean Americans have to be registered. Right. So they registered several thousand. Uh, Korean Americans registered, voting rights group, registered thousands of Korean Americans, submitted them to Brian Kemp. They were not added on the voter rolls. So Helen Ho, who was head of the organization, called up and said, where's our voters? Mm. And they said, we didn't, we didn't get any such registration forms. You know, and she said, well, yeah, we, we know, but we sent them. We know we have photocopies, so we know. Next thing that happens, they say, oh, you have photocopies? Okay. Next thing that happens, Georgia Bureau of Investigation, like their, their state FBI, brown shirts, kick in the door. I mean, literally break into the office of the 10,000 Korean votes group seize the computer, seize the files, and threaten everyone with felony arrest and threaten felony charges against the group for vote tampering. That is, they photocopied registration forms hmm. because 
Brian Kemp says if you photocopy a registration form, you violated the law. But there's no other way to find out if Brian Kemp has violated the law by not adding your voters. So you have a photocopy. Now, that's what they will go to. They will literally kick in your door and threaten to arrest your registrars if you are not of the white persuasion. That's what's happening in America. It's crazy. That's in the book. And John Lewis uh, obviously was on the right side, but his response was, was let's dance. Uh, so you got to give him credit. Well, Thanks, you know, uh, you talk about uh, Ted Rawls' uh, comic book in the middle of your book, and people might mm-hmm. not take it serious. But there was a, a young man who did three comic books about the life of John Lewis, and John Lewis loved them. Yep. Well, we do it for a reason. I want to get this out, and I want people to understand what we're talking about. And I also, listen, steal some of the uh, comics and spread them around. Uh, here's what I want to do. I want people to get the book, How Trump Stole 2020, right? So if you, listen to me, if you get the book today when you're listening and you say, I would then go to gregpalast.com, gregpalast.com, it says contact Greg, say that you heard me on Maria Heller, you heard Greg Palast on Maria Heller, I've got the book, here's a receipt, take a snap or a screenshot. And I will send you, I can only do it like this week because I still have the rights, but I will send you the audio book for free. That's usually like 30 bucks. And I will send it to you for free. Because if you're Maria Heller, but you have to say you heard me on Maria Heller, you got to go to greatpals.com and send me a little snap that you picked up the book. Uh, but it's really important, especially because I know you, well, I know that this program's going out nationally, but I'm very concerned about people in Arizona, which is, a swing state. Why is that even a swing state? It should be solid blue given the demographics of Arizona, but they've done such a darn good job mm-hmm. of keeping brown people off the voter rolls and blocking the vote that um, Arizona is now a swing state, which is absurd. It's not a swing anything. It's just it's a it's an apartheid state. Well, it might swing blue this year. So Yeah, well, I mean it is blue. Right. I mean, demographically, but, I mean, the vote may turn out it's that just that way. they've done a damn good job of scaring away mm. voters of, of color. So, uh, you know, and and I filmed there. I've been to Arizona. Um, we did have, I actually went to Joe Arpaio's prison. Very important. There's a lot about Chris Kobach in this book. Chris Kobach of Kansas. And by the way, if you don't can't remember that name, I just think KKK. He's Trump's vote thief in chief. He was the lawyer for Joe Arpaio. Uh, Chris Kobach is a white supremacist, and I rarely, rarely, rarely say that about politicians, no matter what their views. Very few, I would actually say, are actually a true white supremacist. He's one, and he's a key advisor to Donald Trump on how to steal the vote. It's just that simple. So he was Arpaio's share. He's the guy who also wrote SB... um, what is it, SB 1070, uh, the uh, voting wall, uh, the driving wall Brown law mm-hmm. in Arizona, even though he was the Kansas Secretary of State, he did this. Um, so he's been going around the nation uh, providing hit lists to GOP Secretaries of State of people to remove from the voter rolls, and it's millions. It's millions. So, again, it's in the book How Trump Stole 2020. But, again, we can steal it back. They, they play these games. Right. You, and, by the way, the number one way of stealing it back, legitimately, we don't steal. We don't need to. The number one thing you can do is, is vote. Don't steal your own vote. Overwhelm the steal. Mm-hmm. Or they, by my calculation, they stole about 7 million votes from Hillary Clinton. And it's broken down in the book in quite a bit of detail, about 7.8 million votes. And voters voters removed, ballots not counted. That's, that's not small. Right. We had a president picked by 537 votes in 2000. It's not small. However, and in 2004, the whole race came down to Ohio, 100,000 votes. Now, um, so you can overcome, overwhelm the steal. Obama did it in 8 and 12, According, when I was writing for Rolling Stone, um, uh, my co-writer, this is Greg Palace, by the way, uh, my co-writer, Bobby Kennedy, he could actually call Obama, and he did. He said, well, what, 
do you know about these vote suppression tricks? And, and Obama was completely informed. He was one of the most knowledgeable people I've ever heard in uh, elected officials who knew about vote suppression in detail and, and the trickery. Mm-hmm. He had a pretty darn good idea. So the question is, why didn't he say something? His view was, we're just going to overwhelm it. We're just going to overwhelm it. And so you can, they can't steal all the boat votes all the time. Now, I disagree with his philosophy on that, frankly. I think you fight the steal. Mm-hmm. But whether you fight the steal or just overwhelm them, I think you've got to do both. Right. And that way we can do something that's quite unusual for America. Let the voters pick the president. Wow, what a shockeroo that would be. Well, I mean, listen, we've seen, you know, people that were that got the popular vote and didn't become president. Uh, we've seen people that got the electoral vote. I mean, there's no question that Gore won um, Florida in 2000. There is no question, and this is important. Part of the key to understanding how Trump stole 2020 is to understand how Trump stole 2016. And that's the, that's one of our big issues. Right. The theft of 16, in fact, there's a, for example, there's a chapter called Michigan, Michigas. Now, in how Trump stole 2020. Donald Trump became president because he won Michigan by supposedly 10,000 votes, 10,700. Mm-hmm. Maria. 75,000, in fact, 75,355 ballots were never counted in Michigan. Seven times Trump's margin. 75,000 ballots not counted. Whose ballots weren't counted? The answer is almost all those ballots not counted were in Detroit. 87 vote counting machines, that is the scanners, broke down. So they couldn't read the ballots because the machines broke. Now, in Detroit... Because, by the way, it's not Detroit's problem. Detroit told the state in advance, our machines are not up to this big election. We need money for new machines. They would, the Republican governor refused to release money to Detroit to let them get new machines. So they knew that votes were going to be lost, you know, like they were shedding tears for all those black votes that would get lost. All right. So you had 75,000 votes out of Detroit, basically Motown. Those are not Trump's voters. Hillary Clinton victory was in that pile of uncounted ballots in Michigan. And then you go to Wisconsin, where supposedly, once again, Trump surprised victory of 22,000 votes. Yes, Hillary should have campaigned there, but there's a reason she didn't. She won. She won overwhelmingly. It was a crush. It wasn't even close. No, Trump did not win that state. What happened was, two weeks before the election, they changed the requirement for voter ID. Two weeks before the election, requiring a state photo voter ID. And guess what? If you are a University of Wisconsin student, and there's 182,000 of them, they were not allowed to use their state photo ID given by the university. That was not qualified for voting. But your gun license, your hunting license, your concealed carry permit, those are allowed for Mm. voting. And of course, so that was over 100,000 Wisconsin students removed. Right. Trump wins by 22,000, and according to the University of Wisconsin study, also in the book, 50,000 African Americans lost their vote, mostly in Milwaukee, because they don't have driver's licenses. Who doesn't have a driver's license? Well, Maria, people don't have cars. People right. don't drive. Poor people. They don't have driver's licenses. Kids, right. They're urban. They, they're low income. They live in, uh, they use public transport. In other words, they're Democrats. Right. They're poor. So who won Wisconsin? Who won Michigan? Let me tell you, Trump lost 2016, and I show you how that's done in detail with some dark humor to it because I'm telling you a terrible story, but I got to add some humor. Right. But I'm in these places. I'm slogging. You watch me slog through the snow in Michigan, right. looking for those ballots. Maria, they stole it in 16. They can steal it in 20. And anyone, I just heard James Carville say, "Don't worry about it. Trump's toast." That's exactly what Carville said yeah, in, in 2016. this time four years ago. In July of 2016, Hillary Clinton was kicking Donald Trump's butt in the polls. Mm-hmm. Kicking his butt. It was over with. If you remember, even the day before the election, MSNBC saying, no path to 270 for Trump, it's all over. Who's in the White House? Exactly. My friends. Mm-hmm. Thieves. Vote 
thieves are in the White House. They got away with the crime. We're going to bust the crime. But it's already been stolen. We have to steal it back. Absolutely. Well, you look at Kentucky, where they've cut, you know, all the uh, the voting uh, polling places where people can go vote. Uh, I think like 95 polling places shut down. A lot of states are doing they that. They were down to, yep. Yeah. In fact, Lexington, Kentucky, which is the largest city in Kentucky, and of course the center of its African-American population, was down to a single polling station. They had to do it in a stadium. The, the hmm. uh, Milwaukee went from 180 polling stations to five. And there's a reason, because almost all poll workers, overwhelmingly, uh, are above 60 years of age, according to the federal government, which tracks this. It's too dangerous for older people, the poll workers, to show up. So they couldn't, main, they did not have workers for the polls. But they said, well, people are mailing, going to mail in their ballots. But if they don't, again, if they don't mail the ballot to you, you're not getting, you, you have no right. choice. And you did, by the way, suggest one thing that I do have there. If you don't get your ballot, your mail-in ballot. If it doesn't arrive, not only should you scream about it, but you should go and vote early. So if there's a problem, you can take care of it. And by the way, some states, they don't necessarily tell you this, but some states do have same-day registration, meaning if you find yourself purged, ask them if you can register on the spot. In some states, you can. Wisconsin, for example, they're purging people all over the place, and I talk about the, the purges coming up in Wisconsin. Um... But, you know, you can actually, they don't tell you this, but you can register on the day. The problem is you're going to need all your ID, et cetera. Right, which most so, people have but, no clue where you know, there are many steps you can take, but voting really early if you don't get that mail-in ballot so you can straighten out the problem. And if you go during the week, I've been all over the country at early voting stations. If you can get in during the week, um, there's usually no one around. So it's safe and it's quick. Right. Well, you but look that's at cheap advice. All right, absolutely, it's good <laughs> advice. You know, I was yeah. reading that the Supreme Court has basically put a poll tax on the felons in Florida. Uh, well, so, yeah, I mean, in fact, it, it's interesting. You know that, believe it or not, I got a call. I won't say which major news outlet literally called me to ask me for the names and a, if they could contact the people who were re- illegally removed in Florida in 2000. And I asked this reporter. I said. Um, isn't the deadline kind of over? I mean, I did this story 20 years ago. Why didn't you ask me about the the illegally removed black voters then? Why didn't I get a call then when right. <laughs> you know, during the election? Um, but yeah, so the Supreme Court is, by the way, when you talk about a poll tax, the Supreme Court also said that Alabama, and this would also apply to Missouri and a couple of other states, can they require you to notarize your ballot. Ridiculous. Notarize your ballot in the middle of a pandemic. Not only is that a poll tax, right. but like it's, it's literally dangerous. So a federal court judge says, this is insane. Alabama, it's either notarization or two witnesses. And he says, look, this is physically dangerous to, to do this. You can't have a requirement that people endanger themselves and the, the um, affidavit the notarization is a poll tax. The Supreme Court three weeks ago just said, "Nah, right." Tough. Well, don't you know, too bad, my friends. Well, you're going to pay, right. and, and you're going to pay, and you're going to die, and we don't care. Well, don't forget the Supreme Court picked George Bush in two thousand. But yeah. listen, Tr- Greg, I've loved talking to you. Everybody needs to get this book. Buy a couple of them and pass them around. Uh, but our time is up, and I really appreciate you spending this time with me today, Greg. If you don't mind, I'll, I'll give people a hint. This is Greg Palace, and the book is How Trump Stole 2020. And yes, if you pick up two, you're going straight to voter heaven. <laughs> <laughs> the important thing is, it really is a way, it's, it, it really does have that ballot kind of, you really do have to protect your vote. Absolutely. So, well, okay, fantastic. Thank you, Maria. Thank you for being with me for since... The beginning. <laughs> Absolutely. And we'll be here, I guess, till it's all over, till the fat man sings. So take care. It's great. <laughs> Catch you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Check out Greg's work if you're not familiar with him at gregpalace.com. There's a live link here. And again, <laughs> take his advice because it's good advice. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. 
Thank you for listening and supporting the Maria Show. Tell others what you learned today. Knowledge becomes wisdom only when it's shared. Encourage others to subscribe today. www.maria.net Often imitated, never duplicated. A world of information all in one place. www.maria.net Always ahead of the curve. Always on your side. Get active or get radioactive. Subscribe today.